morning folks, a chilly one today, hope you're all doing well. You know, that just never becomes boring, that waking up in the morning and opening the blind and you get a different view every time. That is uh, something pretty special. I think everyone should experience that at some point in their life. Look at this for log burnness. It's been on about 20 minutes and it's already over 30 degrees. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have a visitor. Ah, oh, you got the camera going. Recognise that van? <laughs> I've done it again, folks. I do apologise. I've started calling this Ashes Late Night Show or something. To be fair, I've only got one thing that I want to uh, talk about today anyway, really. That was the plan anyway, so it doesn't really matter what time it is. So, I'm just off. As always, 10 o'clock at night to find myself somewhere to sleep. Now, if I'm honest, I'm probably not going to go to the same spot as last night. If I wanted a live set show, I'd go to Amsterdam or something. But when you're trying to get some gear, you don't really want that kind of them kind of activities going on outside your van. Now, what I want to talk about is power. This is more geared towards. 12 volt off grid power experiences with it and keeping my batteries charged because although it sounds simple it's actually not that easy of a thing to achieve there's quite a lot of trial and error I'd say I probably qualify now to talk to you all about my experiences let you know confidently what works for me I believe now I have found solution means power is no longer of concern. I did actually misspeak on the tour, I apologise for that. Uh, I said I had 380 amp batteries, I actually got 360 amps, so that's 480 amps total. You don't want to be taking your AGM batteries under 50%, so realistically that gives me 240 amps of power to play with. Uh, so how I use that, how efficiently I use that, etc. is one thing, but charging it up is another thing. 240 amps is a lot, and as I found out, it's quite difficult to charge. It's all well and good having this storage capacity, but if I can't put the amps back into the battery, then it's completely useless. I tried uh, a VSR split charger, voltage sensitive relay, You've, uh, you probably remember my video on that not very long ago about how shit they are. The actual technology itself, the thing, isn't shit because at the end of the day it's just a switch, it's just a gate. It closes, lets the power through. I've just realised you probably can't hear a word I'm saying with that blower on. I do apologise for that. It's not the VSR's fault, but it's up to you to use it in the right application, which, as it turns out, I wasn't and not many people know that. Uh, I was hanging out with Gadget John a little while back and he had a, an amp clamp, a DC amp tester so we could see how much power was actually going through from the front to the back and even at, you know, good RPMs where there's 14 odd volts or whatever being generated there was only I think it peaked at about 20 something amps. I don't really know why that is, uh, but it got me thinking all sorts. As you probably remember, the supercharger, the generator, we measured that at the same time and that was only putting out about 20 amps. So that, that got me thinking all sorts about, oh, is that all that my batteries can actually accept? I asked a few people and they were like, yeah, you know, these batteries, they can only, they can only accept so many amps won't let you charge them, so I'm thinking, well, how the hell are you supposed to charge the bloody things then? 
because if they're only going to take 20 amps, it's going to take ages. But then I got this new gadget. Uh, people have been telling me to buy a B2B or a DC to DC charger for a long time. And the reason I haven't is because they're bloody expensive, to be honest. You know, I'll, I'll put that out there right now. They're not cheap. You can get cheaper ones. You can get like, you know, 30. I know uh, Sterling Power. I think it's Sterling Power or just Sterling. I don't know. Something like that. They do uh, a 30 amp model and they do a 60 amp model. So if I was going to buy one of them, I'd be wanting the 60 amp model, obviously. But then a good friend of mine decided to buy me a B2B bought it a little while ago so I've had enough time to test this. I flip this on now so it does its boot up cycle and we can see what's happening. It's a Votronic um, something. I don't know what the numbers are after. I will put a link in the description of the video to this product. Uh, I'm not like I say this isn't them sending me it for free and I say it's good because I didn't buy it but a friend bought me it. So, you know, it's, it's not like that. I'm, this is a genuine thing. I'm just giving you my opinion. Let me tell you, it is, it is the one. The model I've got is just the straight beta bit. You can get from the same brand one of these that does mains charger and solar controller built into the one unit. I, in my opinion, I've not used one, but I would not recommend doing that purely on the basis that if that unit breaks you lose three options to choose charge your batteries right there that's three that well that's your three resources of battery charging gone if you don't have spares and backups on board then you're screwed this is just the, the b2b on its own b2b battery to battery by the way i don't know if i said that already this model i've got isn't 30 amps it's not 60 amps it is in fact 70 amps and you know what it actually puts 70 amps into the batteries i'm not sure what this is going to do to my batteries you know this may half their life cycle i don't know because i've only had it a couple of months but so far it's performing so well that well it's winter and i don't even care about solar anymore i just drive for a bit and then I'm charged. So yeah, a genuine 70 amps, and it's also, I think it's a four stage unit. So it analyzes what kind of level your batteries are at, and it determines how much power it needs to go in. So this is on bulk charge now. I've just looked up at my little screen above here. I will show you this in a minute, don't worry. And my screen is saying 48.7 amps are going into the batteries right now. That's already over double what was going in there before like I say one of the spots that just went by more shaggers brilliant there's shaggers in the my spot up here that's it like we're driving to France tonight oh, I don't see any oh god that was steep okay are we clear yes we are so there's a, dis uh, a button here to light up the screen. And there you can see, right now it's putting in 44.5 amps. And you can see on the left hand side there, that little bar, that level, shows where the battery's at. The unit has analyzed it, it's determined that 44 amps right now is the best amount to go in. So that's what it's doing. So the next thing is you need to be able to turn it on. I've opted for a separate switch purely so that I have the ability to turn it on and off at my will so that when I first start the van I can flick the switch off and leave it off and let the van warm up and stuff just so that there's not as much of an initial load uh, on the alternator because obviously I don't want to burn it out but the other way to do it is you wire into your van's ignition so that once you start it and the engine starts, you go off one of your ignition feed wires and that will then turn it on in place of the switch. But me personally, 
I'd always say go with the switch because then you have full control. So there's the level at the side, bulk absorb, float, care. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I think it's about as good as you can get for these batteries, realistically. Right, so we're in the back now. Again, you'll have to excuse the state of the wiring because it's not finished. There's not really a lot to see, it's just a silver box. I thought I'd show you anyway, just for reference. So, there it is. That is the main B2B. Uh, size reference, my hands are a fair size. And yeah, it's not ginormous. Smaller than the inverter. In a nutshell, what goes into it, your main side, you've got a feed that comes from the starter battery at the front. That's obviously fused. So that goes in, you've got an earth underneath it that goes to the earth on your leisure batteries. And then you've got an out which goes to plus on your leisure batteries. On this side, this is the only difference between this and a, and a split charger. You've got various sensor wires in here. So you have a plus and a minus that goes to the front battery, a plus and a minus that goes to the leisure batteries. And then you've got this one here, which is a temperature sensor. And that goes just there on the earth of the leisure batteries. It's also that this unit can monitor what both batteries are doing and give them the power they need accordingly and that kind of thing. And then this cable here is the display. Uh, one thing to note about that, it looks like it's a normal like broadband phone plug but it's not. The, the clip is the same, however this has six wires in it rather than four. So make sure you do that because... Uh, I bought a four pin, 10 meter one, and obviously it didn't work, so I had to then buy another six pin, 10 meter, so I could get it from here right to the front. But that's pretty much it. There's not a lot to it this end. On the side of the unit down there, I don't know if you can see, you got your status LEDs here, and then these dip switches, you set these, you see, just about. You set them according to the parameters of your battery, so like how much it's going to charge by. You can turn the power down if you need to. Right, I'm going to call it there for today because that is all I wanted to talk about really, to be honest. So yeah, just a quick one, but I hope it's helped, hope it's informative. Uh, yeah, I'll leave a link in the description if you do want to buy one. They are quite dear, but you know, 70 amps, <laughs> you, can't, you can't argue with that. What's my battery on now? 13.1 So there you go <laughs> Right, I'll see you all tomorrow